Hi. Now in an earlier tutorial, I showed you that sometimes we get equations that cannot be factorized, cannot be solved easily. So we have to turn to another method, and one of those methods is a numerical method. And there's several methods out there. Last time we discussed the solution of this equation by using the bisection method. Now I'm going to show you how we can use another method called linear interpolation. So we're given this equation then, x cubed plus 2x minus 2 equals 0, told that it has a root, a solution in other words, between 0 and 1. And we've got to find an approximation to this root by using linear interpolation twice over. So if you're given an equation, make sure first of all that you rearrange it so that it equals 0. And then you need to define it, say, through a function. So I'm going to say something like, let f of x okay, be identical to the left-hand side of the equation here. In this case, x cubed plus 2x minus 2. Now, if we were to sketch this graph, say y equals f of x, we would find that we've got a change in sign over the interval between 0 to 1, telling us that f of x would equal 0 in this interval. Let's just check it out. You can see that when we do f of 0, you get minus 2. And when you do f of 1, you end up with 1. So you've got this change of sign. The graph at when x was 0 was down here at minus 2. And when x was 1, it was up here with a value of 1. So we know the graph because there's change in sign and it's continuous over this interval, there's no break in it, that it must have gone through here at some point. But the question is, where did it cross the x-axis? Where is that root? Well, one way that we can do it then is by drawing a straight line between these two points at minus 2 and at 1. Now this is where this line crosses the x-axis at this point here. It's not necessarily the root, it's not where the curve would necessarily cross, but it's hopefully going to be an approximation to where it crosses. Let's call that approximation alpha. Now, we've got to work out what alpha would be. And to do that, we see that if we consider the two triangles that we've got, let's just show you these triangles. We've got this triangle here, and we've got this triangle here. They're similar. They're similar because I know that these two angles here and here are exactly the same. They contain two right angles, and obviously the third angle must be exactly the same. So when we compare the triangles, I need to compare the sides. And I can see that this length, okay, one unit up, let's just write it down here. By comparing the triangles, we see that one compared with this length over here, which is going to be two units. Okay, it's got minus two there, but remember its length would be two units. So we do one compared with two equals, and we compare two other matching sides. So we start with this triangle, and we've got this length compares with this length down here. So this length would be 1 minus alpha, put 1 minus alpha, and we compare it with the equivalent length for this triangle, which is alpha minus 0, or just simply alpha. Okay, so all we need to do now is just rearrange this equation to work out what alpha is. And if we multiply both sides by 2 alpha, you end up with alpha equals 2 lots of 1 minus alpha, 2 bracket 1 minus alpha. Expand the bracket, and you've got alpha equals 2 minus 2 alpha. Add 2 alpha to both sides, you end up with 3 alpha 
equals 2, divide both sides by 3, and then you've got alpha equals 2 thirds. Or is the decimal 0 0.6 recurring? Okay, so now we've used linear interpolation once over, and we've got to use it twice over. So if we just draw a line down here, okay, what have we established so far? What if I just draw again a sketch of this graph? It's not drawn to scale, but uh, hopefully it will help in the understanding of what's going on. Now, we've seen that alpha here is two thirds or 0 0.6 recurring. And we've got to find out whether when we, when we put x equal to two thirds, whether the graph would have been positive above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So let's do f of 0 0.6 recurring or simply f of 2 thirds. If you put 2 thirds into your equation here, you get exactly minus 10 over 27. Okay? Now, that's telling us that we've got a negative value when you do f of alpha. That means that, in fact, the graph would have passed through a point below the x-axis at alpha. So let's just put that in, that at this point here, let's say that that is 2 thirds. Just pop that up there. We know that the graph would have been a negative value, negative 10 over 27. I'll just write that in there as minus 10 over 27. We also know that when x was 1, the graph would have passed through the 1 up here. So let's just put 1 in here, okay, and we'll mark in that it would have gone through a point up here at 1. Now, if we join a line between here and here, okay, we've now got a better approximation for our root. So if we call this point here our new alpha, okay, let's just put that there, we can use similar triangles again, looking at this triangle and seeing that it's similar to this triangle here. So we just set up our new equation again by comparing sides. So if we compare this length with this length, we've got 1 here. Okay, let's say 1 compared with this length. Now remember, it's negative, but the length would be 10 over 27. So we've got 1 divided by 10 27ths equals. And then if we compare this length now with this length, we've got 1 minus alpha. 1 minus alpha compared with this length here, which is alpha minus 2 thirds. There's nothing to stop you using decimals here, okay? But uh, I'm just keeping it in an exact form. So if we rearrange this, multiply both sides by 10 27ths and alpha minus 2 thirds, you're therefore going to have 1 times alpha minus 2 thirds, so that's alpha minus 2 thirds, equals, and then if we do 10 27ths times 1 minus alpha, we end up with 10 27ths minus 10 over 27 alpha. So it just needs rearranging. Add 10 27ths alpha to both sides and add 2 thirds to both sides you'll find that you end up with 37 over 27 alpha equals 28 over 27. So if you multiply both sides by 27, that will mean you get 37 alpha equals 28, and then all you need to do is divide both sides by the 37, and you'll end up with alpha equaling 28 over 37. And if you work this out as a decimal, it turns out to be 0 0.756.
756756, in other words, 0.756 recurring. So now I've applied linear interpolation twice over. And so we can give an approximation to the root of this equation. Let's say we give x to one decimal place. So we can say that therefore x equals 0 0.8 to one decimal place. And this compares favorably to the method we used in the previous video, which was the bisection method. Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea of how we go about using linear interpolation then to find an approximation to a root. And in the next video in this series, what I'll be looking at is another way, which is called the newton raphson method. Okay, so you might care to take a look at that one.